אחים ואחיות יקרים, I don't know how much more time we'll continue to meet this way through this media, through these video clips, but I'm waiting for the time when we will be able to see you face to face and hug one another and express our love in this way. But in the meantime, I want to conclude this series of the pillar of fire about love. In the last few days we've gone over these verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 to 8 that speak about the different aspects of love. Remember, love is patient, love is kind, is not jealous, is not brag, is not arrogant, doesn't act unbecomingly, does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But these verses 4 to 8 that we've spoken about, these are planted in the middle of chapter 13. And chapter 13 is between chapter 12 and chapter 14. Chapters 12 and 14 speak about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Two chapters, two whole chapters that speak about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And also chapter 13 begins, verses 1 to 3, speaks about gifts. And it also concludes from the middle of verse 8 until verse 14, where the emphasis is on the gifts again. But here in this chapter, he tells us that love is, is so much more important than the work of the gifts. That doesn't mean the gifts are bad. No, the gifts are wonderful. But love is what God is looking for. The gifts are what we've received. And what God is interested in said, is what we are and who we are. Are we faithful to use, yes, the gifts he gave us? But let's look at these verses briefly from chapter 13 and compare the gifts to love and show how love is so much greater. So I'm going to read from verse 1, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. How many times have people fought and believers have rejected one another and arguments about the gifts of speaking in tongues? And that is not love. When someone fights about the gifts of tongues and he injures his brother or sister, so then he's not working love. God wants, first off, that we would work in love, operate in love. And if we don't have that love, so all of our speaking in tongues is just like a clanging cymbal. It's just like a noise, bang, bang, bang. It's not worth anything. It's just a noise. And if I have the gift of prophecy and know all the mysteries and all the knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Astonishing. Prophecies, faith, all these supernatural things that are wonderful and amazing and they're astonishing and they're exciting. But he says, the Holy Spirit, if you've got all those gifts that I give you, but you don't have the fruit that I want to grow in you, you don't have love, it's not worth it. It's like nothing. It's nothing. And then he says, it's even something more astonishing. And if I will give all my possessions, all my money, and will feed, my, feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but I do not have love, it profits me nothing. Wow. Even if I am ready to burn myself, to sacrifice myself to death, a terrible death of burning, but if all of this is done not out of love, none of it will help me. I can sacrifice myself through religion, 
or through fanaticism or even out of hatred or jealousy or out of fighting or bitterness or out of complexes. I don't know, all kinds of other things that can cause me to do this. But the only motivation that really is worth something is when I do it out of love, love for God. That out of it, God has grown love towards others. And then he continues in verse 8. He says, But there are gifts of prophecy, and they will be done away. And there are tongues, and they will cease. And there is knowledge, and it will be done away. For the, we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. So all these gifts, they're good for here and now, and for this period of time we live in. But one day, there will be no need for it. When we'll stand face to face with God in heaven, there will be no need now to say to us, there's a kingdom of heaven, because of course we'll be in it. We'll be living there. We'll see it and we'll experience it. So all these prophecies, they will have no more place. In verse 10, and when the per when I was 11, when I was a child, I used to speak like a child. You know, when we're like babies, I think like a child, I reason like a child. So whoever, we expect someone who's a baby to act like a baby in his understanding. But God expects us to grow and not stay babies spiritually. And when I became a man, I did away with childish things. That's okay that a little child takes a rattle and he shakes it with his hand when he's still in diapers and he's laying there in his bassinet. That's okay. But when an adult who's 40 years old walks around with a rattle and he's shaking it and with this spittle coming down on his chin, we need to hospitalize him. This isn't something cute. And we don't want to be like that spiritually. Let's not stay babies. For now we see in the mirror dimly, then face to face. Now I know in part, one day we'll see Yeshua face to face. We read about him now in his word. We see him, but it's like through a cloud. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I've been fully known. Now we know a little bit compared to God who knows everything about me. But the time will come when I also will know as He knows me, I will know Him. We'll be in heaven. We'll see Yeshua in His glory. We'll have the new body that can stand up, uh, up in, in God's glory. But now, faith, hope, love, abide these three, but the greatest of them is the love. So we don't cancel or deny the gifts of the Spirit, and of course not the faith. We want that hope, we want that faith. But God says, the greatest of them is love. And so then I want to test myself. I want to measure myself against the Word of God. Where have I come to in this love, concerning love? Do I have love for my enemies? How much love do I have? May God help us to apply this. I want to conclude with 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. It says these things about love and hope and faith. I'll start from verse 2. We give thanks to God always for all of you, making mention of you in our prayers. Constantly bearing in mind, remember, your work of faith. Faith works, just like it says in James chapter 2. Faith without works is dead. It can't save. Faith, living faith, is something that works. And the labor of love Love is ready to work until you're worn out, till you're tired, to sacrifice. Love is ready to sacrifice itself. The faith that works is a labor of love. It works hard. It's ready to sacrifice. It doesn't enjoy. It does it out of love. And steadfastness of hope. Hope lets us suffer. 
When we know where we're going, and when we lift up our eyes to heaven, and we look up, we know that there, in the third heaven, there is our home. There we are waiting for. That's where our Lord is, who saved us, who loves us. That's where our wedding will be. There is Jerusalem, heavenly Jerusalem. That's where we're going to go. And when we have that hope, then that hope is ready to suffer. It's patience. The patience of fastness of hope in our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. May the Lord help us in this, to apply this, to work and to labor, to labor of love, and to wait in patience, in long-suffering. May the Lord help us. Amen.